there are other places where there are problems. Um, so we'd like now to introduce to you two of our fellows from very, di very different countries. And so could I invite um, Dr. Leila Alieva to come up and um, Dr. Farah Ali. Leila, are you going to begin? Or? Leila's from Azerbaijan and Farah from Iraq. Um, Leila is a political commentator on her own country and is one of the lucky people to have received a visa for those with exceptional talent. <laughs> we know what visas are, but start with you, Leila, to give us an idea of what you have learned through Cara. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. First, I'll tell you the conditions under which I had to run from the country. Um, our government got scared by the Euromaidan events. So you never plan it, actually. You never plan to leave the country, and that's one of the problems that it's sudden, it's unexpected, and in my case, I just grabbed my dying mother from her bed and ran to the first country, which is the closest next door, which is Georgia. And then, of course, while there, I felt in safety, and um, the car came to, my, uh, to save me. Uh, but uh, before that, you simply follow and observe how one, your friends and your colleagues are being arrested one after another, and how your friend is telling, we should be prepared that we will all be arrested. And my preparation I saw as looking through the conditions in all 25 or 28 colonies or prisons in Azerbaijan, seeing which one is better, which shows as if I, my naivete, as if I would give I would be given a choice, and when my friend says, Lila, there's only one prison for women, so you would not <laughs> have to choose between these 25. And then I would think, if they allow the computer, maybe I should go, I shouldn't escape. But then somebody said, no computers. Um, I didn't, I still, until the very last moment, I couldn't believe that I might represent a threat to the government. I was an academic. The only thing I did, I didn't compromise my expertise under quickly changing political conditions. And uh, I was giving commentaries, and I was getting also grants from some foundations who were blacklisted by the government and whom they apparently suspected in preparing the revolution similar to that in Euromaidan. Um, I still had to explain my mother, who could never understand how can her daughter, who she brought up as a very decent girl, how can she be criminally charged by the Department of Serious Crimes of the Prosecutor's Office? I think she never understood until her death. I had to leave her eventually because I couldn't bring her to the UK. Um, but I was very lucky to find myself with the self of, uh, help of Cara in one of the best institutions, not the best institutions of the world in the UK, you know, Oxford. What is it to be in Oxford to, be, uh, to have an access to the libraries, to this community, to discussions, to the level? And even when you help some old person to cross the street, he or she appears to be a Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> so that's how it works. So I was very lucky. And in spite of some warnings that, you know, you might feel lonely there, it's, that's exactly what I needed. I wanted to be left alone. I wanted just to cycle and to watch this amazing uh, medieval, beautiful town. And of course, I was surrounded by care of my colleagues. I'm very grateful to Roy Allison, the director of Center for Russian and uh, um, Eurasian Studies. And of course, that was fantastic opportunity. If I stayed at home and I was, um, uh, after I left, I was imposed travel ban, so I would not be able to do anything. But I went to 38, um, uh, conference trips per year. So I was publishing, I was reading, I was, so it was fantastic uh, years. And it's all thanks to the support 
of Kara. Um, I, um, I went through a lot of dramas because it doesn't stop. You, you're losing everything, basically. You start your life from zero when you're abroad. You lose your status, you lose your property, you lose everything. You just find yourself in the new country. And basically, especially not when you are too young. So, and um, but you you lose you lose your status because you are powerful back home, and that's exactly why your government um, targets you. But then you get empowered in a different way. You get empowered. You are more exposed to the international environment. You can realize your creative and your scholarly potential. So these are um, both positive and, of course, sad sides. Kara can do a lot, but it also her uh, opportunities are limited because it can't affect, for instance, the British legislation, which can't allow you to bring your dependent who is your mother. So I had to watch my mother dying on Skype, unfortunately. Then I lost my cat. Bringing the cat is also very expensive. You can't afford it. And the cat was already um, sitting there back home with a foreign passport. That was the only thing which was left for me from my family. But the cat died from the accident. So I was lost. I was left completely alone. But I don't think I would survive the prison. So I'm really very grateful. Thank you so much. Leila started in psychology and then moved into international relations. Um, and Farah, whom, from whom we'll hear now, she started off in English literature and drama before moving into more social sciences. And she's now working on Iraqi, the, the um, diaspora of Iraqi women. So Farah, your story, please. Um, good evening. Uh, I have come to the UK in uh, 2012 um, um, to do my PhD. And uh, just like Dr. Leila, I have also had plans to go back and uh, start my, uh, uh, my scholarly work as, uh, as a woman. And uh, because my PhD was uh, uh, based on identity politics, um, I had uh, plans to work on advancing um, women rights in my home country, Iraq. Um, however, in 2014, and after the um, deteriorating security circumstances uh, in Iraq, I have started getting um, news that the situation was not going very well there. Um, so um, my family told me that um, to go back to Iraq at that time would have uh, posed uh, a risk uh, for uh, myself as a woman and as an academic who is um, working on women's studies and um, uh, researching gender issues. So I have decided to stay in the UK, and this is when Kara stepped in and um, offered their help. Uh, the first time Kara stepped in to help me was when they secured a place for me as a, a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Leeds, where I uh, carried on um, a research uh, project looking into the um, journey of the Iraqi uh, women uh, who have uh, also left the country due to the security circumstances and decided to seek refuge in the UK. So I have started um, looking into their um, journey, uh, how did they uh, make their way to the UK, and uh, the challenges that they have faced after coming to the UK, trying to settle down in their host um, society. Um, that project lasted for one year, and um, with Kara's uh, encouragement and support, uh, I was able to publish it. Um, afterwards, uh, Kara stepped in for the second time uh, to secure a position for me as a postdoctoral fellow also at the University of Hull, where I originally did my PhD. Um, so I stayed there for two years, and uh, 
this time I uh, decided to continue doing um, uh, the second part of my project, which is looking into the uh, challenges that the Iraqi women diaspora are facing when they come to the UK in terms of the language, in terms of um, adjusting to the uh, society uh, and um, the cultural differences that they uh, face um, uh, while um, settling down in the uh, host, uh, host community. Um, so uh, I am uh, approaching the end of this project and hopefully it will find its way to publication uh, just like the last one. Uh, actually, Kara uh, stepped in for the third time to uh, offer their help and support. And um, uh, they uh, also secured a position for me um, uh, for the third time at the university, uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. But um, uh, this time I was able to secure a job, a full-time job um, somewhere else outside the UK. Uh, so I decided to carry on my own journey on um, uh, somewhere else and to start um, establish myself as an academic and as um, uh, as a professor uh, in my uh, in my field. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, without Kara's support, uh, I would not have been able to continue my uh, profession as an academic and my passion for my research. And also without cover support, I would not have been able to continue the research that I have done so far in a safe environment. So Kara have, st have stepped in to help me twice uh, over the last three years. And uh, without cover support, um, I would not have been um, able to um, publish and to continue my, my research and uh, to reach uh, to the point where I am now, where I was able to secure a full-time job uh, and, and continue my own journey. Uh, so, uh, also I wanted to uh, thank um, uh, all the team who are working uh, in Kara, uh, especially uh, uh, Zaid, uh, Zaid El Bayati, and uh, Miss Laura, Miss Laura Pigal, who were um, uh, a help and support throughout uh, over the last three years. Uh, they have uh, spared no effort to be there for me and to continue advising and supporting me um, uh, uh, as long as I, as I was uh, a Kara fellow. So I really, um, uh, I am grateful and thankful for their support and I will definitely keep in touch uh, with them, uh, hoping that I will be able to help this uh, wonderful organization uh, in future. Uh, of course, I don't wish uh, uh, any conflict in the world, uh, but uh, I really hope that CARA, as a, uh, an organization who helps uh, scholars and who helps stranded uh, academics uh, in, across the world, to have more uh, support and have more funding uh, in order to extend their help to as many uh, academics as possible. Uh, in order to help them continue uh, their productive uh, work uh, here in the UK or somewhere else safe enough for them to continue their professions. Thank you very much.